I'm standing where we, it all started 25 years ago at Kasner Intermediate School. This is the place the Lord lay on my heart as the wife and I were driving by one day looking for a place to meet for this new church to get started. It was here, the last place that we looked before we went home that evening, that as we passed by, I said to the wife, that's where the Lord wants us to start Family Community Church. And it was here that 25 years ago that it began. This is their cafeteria building where we met for just about five years. Uh, we had our worship services in there. Uh, people came to know Jesus Christ through the services that were held there. And just a tremendous time for the community to come together, to build a sense of Christian community and Christian faith. And it, it, that's just been awesome. Uh, over here to my left, the immediate left, is a patio area where we sold CDs, uh, excuse me, cassette tapes back in that day. Uh, CDs came much later. But uh, this is also where we had on fifth Sundays and fourth Sundays, we had uh, fellowship meals out here. Uh, we came together. It looks so much smaller now than it did when we were here. It looked really large when we first started uh, 25 years ago. And then just to the, my, uh, just to the east of here also is where our nursery met and parents would drop their kids off in the nursery there and then they would walk around and come into the worship service. And then over here to my immediate right is where we had our first sunrise service. It was extremely cold. Some of the elderly ladies really had a hard time but they brought out blankets and uh, different coats and different things and we had a beautiful about a half hour uh, sunrise service and they wanted to do it every year since. Some of the buildings you see towards the back there is where we held our Wednesday night classes and then our Sunday school classes on Sunday morning. And I mean, it was just awesome to be able to use this facility for about five years and just really develop. And in addition to that, uh, when we had baptisms, uh, things of that nature and special communion services, we would visit other local churches in the area that opened up their doors to us and we were able to use their facilities for those things. And just to God be the glory. And just coming back is just really reflective for me to just see uh, it's been about 20 years since I've been on this campus since we first left and to see where God has taken us to. But, you know, it reminds me of that passage of scripture that says, don't despise small beginnings because God starts with small beginnings and then he allows things to grow. You may be wondering how this small church of about 250 people got from here, Kasner Intermediate School, to the northwest corner of Chestnut and Knees on a 20 acre parcel of land. We're going to show you that now. It is a Hebrew word that speaks of raha, to make known one's presence. When we were at the school and we had formulated a property committee to go and to search out property for us, and they were looking in several locations throughout North Fresno. And I recall one Saturday morning, the Lord waking me up and uh, bringing me on a journey. And he brought me to uh, the corner of Chestnut and Knees. And I looked across the street at 20 acres of undeveloped land. And the Lord just really impressed upon my heart at that time. This is where a family community church would be built. And uh, the words just burned into my spirit at that time. Now is the time to possess the land. Each Saturday morning, the issues that came before that group were not some that we could just ordinarily handle as individuals, but we knew that if we kept praying and keeping our faith where we needed to have it, we would be able to keep moving forward. They were looking for land rather than a um, facility already constructed and the thinking was that they anticipated a lot of growth. We were such a young church at the time. We were so young. The pastor was a wonderful leader but many of us were young spiritually. We were young financially. During that time uh, I guess what really sticks in my mind is we were trying to raise funds for this church and I was looking at the numbers and looking at the history and I was saying to myself all along Ain't no way this is going to happen. Now, needless to say, did we have all the funds for that kind of a parcel of land? Absolutely not. But guess what? We know that God owns everything. And he knows exactly where you're to be and exactly what time you're to be there. And so we trusted God. The 
original asking price on the property was one million seven. Uh, through our negotiations, we were able to get it down to one million one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And after we had settled on that final price, they were now discussing what type of deposit we would leave with them. The conventional uh, thinking at that time would be 10%, which would be a little over $100,000. Please keep in mind, all we had at the time, church a little over a year old, was $5,000 in the bank. That was it. So as they were discussing on their side of the table amongst themselves, there was one other gentleman at the end of the table who really had nothing to say through all the deliberations, but he was just very quietly sitting there and listening. And as their side began to go back and forth about how much they were going to receive from us, this gentleman spoke up and said, they are another church. Why don't we just get $5,000 in good faith from them and close this deal out? And it was just really awesome to watch God work like that on our behalf. Dr. Brown, Dr. Jolie, and ourselves, we just looked at each other. We knew what we had in the bank. He raw at the right moment for us. We had had a consultant, a Christian consultant, come out from the Midwest, and he talked to the group of us. And we were talking about how to get the funds necessary to build this multi-purpose facility. The, the goal was 400000 And I remember the people who were uh, the ones helping us with the with the goal of raising the money, had said that no church of that size, not, not that many people, could ever raise $400,000. How much money, I came right down to it and asked, how much money uh, can we expect to realize? He said something in the neighborhood of about $50,000, 50 to 60, he would say. However, he said at the most, given the size of this congregation, our experience has been that at the most you could ever hope for uh, to uh, raise in this period of time would, would be about $70,000 at the most, and that was a big, you know, if. You know, we had had the campaign, we had filled out our commitment cards, and it was a Sunday to tally up all the uh, commitment cards and everything, and Pastor had these bricks, and um, each brick represented $100,000, as I recall. And, you know, everybody was expecting maybe, you know, two or $300,000. But when he got up to seven and eight, and then I believe it was number nine, you know, it was a feeling and a something that I've never experienced before, you know, God's people coming together for a common cause like that and realizing that this is not of us, this is truly of God. And the man who was um, conducting this meeting for us was so, he could not believe it. He was just awestruck. He said, I've been doing this a long time and I have not seen this happen before. It was just a real exciting time. And so it had to be God. It could be no one else but him. We're just so grateful for the 25 years that God has blessed us with and has brought us this far. 25 years of building 32,000 square feet of facilities, not just to look good in the community, but to be able to be used for the kingdom of God. That's very touching and that's very real. Then also just thinking about all the ministries that take place within these facilities and how those ministries touch young children, middle-aged families and single people and elderly people, all the various ministries that touch throughout the community and then the missions work that we're doing here and around the world. God has allowed us through this facility to be able to help touch eight other churches in Kenya. And then last but not least are all the souls that have been equipped and have been touched here. The salvations, the baptisms, the weddings, and unfortunately the funerals that may have taken place here as well. But all of that's available to us because of what God has done for us during these 25 years. So continue to pray with us and pray for us and continue to support what God is doing here at Family Community Church.